Hey, it's Avi from JustRightMusic.com. Thank you so much for being with me here today. It is hot in this room and I am a sweatin'. Now, I love No Performer and Sibelius. Uh, you know, they're not perfect, but they, they do their jobs pretty, pretty well. The only issue is that sometimes Sibelius doesn't. And now I've heard from some of you that you just hate the way that No Performer sounds with the Sibelius reverb. Good news for you guys, you can change that reverb setting in Sibelius, and today I'm going to show you how. And I'm not just talking about like the reverb slider in the mixer, I'm talking about changing the actual reverb. Before we dive in, if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button and bell below for more videos helping you get everything out of the way so you can just write music. No Performer is an amazing program and is a million percent better than the stock sounds that come with Sibelius. Don't believe me? Check out this comparison video I did. It's right up here. Just go right up there. The thing is, as we write for different instrumentation, we imagine that instrumentation to be in different rooms. So when we are getting reverb that sounds like it's in a room that I guess doesn't really make sense to our ears or is actively taking us out of the writing process, well, that's a problem. Whatever the reason, by the end of this video, you'll know how to change the reverb, the actual room, quote unquote, and you'll be able to adjust the slider, the reverb slider as well, if you don't know how to do that. I mean, that's like a two minute thing, two second thing that we're gonna go over, but you'll know how to do it. Let's go behind the screen. Now the first thing we need to do is find the actual reverb in the, in the program, right? So to do this, you need to find the performance dialog and to find that, you have to navigate the god-awful ribbon menu, the dreaded ribbon menu. I have literal nightmares about this thing, you guys. Click play in the top menu that changes the tabs, and then right about in the center of the screen here, you'll see performance. Now once open, you'll see a couple of settings, but the one that we're looking for is the second from the top on the left. Now you'll see a box that says reverb that's checked and we wanna keep that checked. But you'll see that there's also a drop down menu and in there you'll see all the different types of rooms that there are that we can use. A lot of classical instrumentations will want a lot of reverb, particularly larger instrumentations where it's thought that you'd be in a bigger sound like an auditorium, a bigger sound, a bigger room like an auditorium or something. But this may not be the case for smaller instrumentations like string quartets or like a chamber orchestra or basically anything that's not a freaking large concert hall. It's for this reason that I think the default reverb setting is set on the second highest setting, but it's still a bit much for some. Me included sometimes. Now let's talk about the rooms themselves. To find which room or reverb setting is right for you, you wanna think about the type of instrumentation that you're using or which instruments are in part of your ensemble. If you're using a larger instrumentation, you're probably gonna want a larger sounding room. And the same is true vice versa. If you're using a smaller instrumentation, you may want a smaller sounding room, but that also depends on the type of effect you're going for. You can have a smaller ensemble in a larger space, but the opposite there isn't always going to be good. It's just not going to sound good, really. It's just not like a realistic thing. Like, I guess you'd be getting the sound of a, a rehearsal room, which isn't usually what people are trying to achieve when they're producing classical music. Usually the aim is to usually, <laughs> usually the aim is to create as natural a sound as possible which is why you know the idea is to go for that auditorium sound for, a, for an orchestra, or to go for kind of like more of that chamber roomy sound for a chamber orchestra. <laughs> <Fuck>. <laughs> Once you've found the, the type of room you're going for, find the one in the settings that matches your idea best. Now the dry feature at the top here won't have any reverb whatsoever. It's really common to see this in reverb plugins, dry versus wet. The dry means just the signal coming in, just the instrument itself, and wet is like the signal post reverb added, right? And dry, so in this case, dry means no reverb whatsoever, but don't do, don't, because it's gonna sound so weird. It makes the instrument sound weird. Like, it, it makes them sound like you're listening to them in a vacuum, which can't ever happen because we need the air to hear the sound. So the air is like an integral part of the timbre of how and how we hear instruments and how we hear the timbre of instruments so don't use dry this is going to take a little bit of trial and error and that's okay find the room that that achieves the best balance for what you're going for 
Now, once you find that, we can go into the mixer window back in like the main Sibelius area and actually dial in the amount of reverb, bleh, reverb, reverb that we want. This is crazy helpful because sometimes the larger setting just it sounds too big, but the smaller setting that you're kind of going back and forth between sounds way too small. So in order to achieve kind of a medium place between the two, you can take the larger setting and really reduce that reverb. And I, I wouldn't recommend doing it the other way, doing the smaller reverb, bumping it up. Usually too much reverb, it's gonna not gonna, I just don't think it's gonna sound good. And I think most audio guys would agree with me there. In order to open the mixer window, you can click M. There's also an option to open it somewhere in the ribbon menu. Good luck finding that. It's there, but good luck. And, and it says right here, reverb. And then there's a slider just like kind of in any mixer and you can adjust it like that. Generally in the audio space, too much reverb is the sign of an amateur. So be conservative with your usage here. Whatever you think might sound great to you, ease off like a little bit, maybe even more than a little bit just to be safe. Now, finally, I wanna show you guys some examples with my own music of how these different reverb sounds sound. First, let's start with some of the smaller reverb settings. Here is an excerpt from one of the art songs from my Henley song cycle that I keep I guess I should put the whole thing up at some point, right? I don't know. Let me know if you guys want to see any of my actual music on this channel. I don't know if I like doing that, but I may put it on a personal YouTube channel that is just like a repository for my music. Let me know. Okay, that was from my song cycle, Four Songs by William Ernest Henley. The next is another small room setting, but this is from a clarinet piano duet that I all wrote, I think, in 2018, or finished in 2018. And uh, this is, uh, yeah, so this is just two instruments, and here you go. So next, let's check out some of these medium reverb settings. First, I wanna show you guys an excerpt from my Piero Ensemble piece that I named Dying. Big, big, big uh, mood lifter there. Check it out. Okay, we're gonna have one more medium reverb room example. The next one is coming from my four horn piece that I literally just finished and still have not titled. So it's just going by four horns.
Okay, awesome. Now let's take a listen to some higher reverb settings, some larger rooms. For this one, we're going to be looking at an orchestral suite. So this third movement kind of blends into the fourth movement a little bit. And I really like the kind of the way the third one ends and the, and the fourth one begins. So I'm going gonna, gonna to play the last section of the third movement into the first section of the fourth movement for this la last and final excerpt. Okay. Well, there you have it. Now you know how to adjust the reverb in Sibelius for when you're using Note Performer, or I guess when you're not even using Note Performer. You, this is kind of just how to, you know, adjust the reverb in Sibelius. It doesn't matter what sounds you're actually using. Are you one of those people that just can't stand too much reverb, or are you one of those people that just love being bathed in the atmospheric ecstasy? Let me know down in the comments. All of the information for on the Note Performer side of things can be found on the support page of their website, so definitely go check that out if you have any other questions about what's no, what Note Performer can and can't do with Sibelius or with any other Note, uh, notation software. If you're looking for some proven tools to help step up your melody game, check out my free guide, Seven Ways to Write a More Effective Melody. Many of these tips that I use and I give to you in this free guide, I ripped off right from my teacher who taught at Juilliard, teaches at Juilliard, teaches at Curtis, went to Northeastern, all those fun and terrible, awful places. Head to justwritemusic.com to get your free copy. There's a link down in the doobly-doo. That's all I have for you guys today. It's been a, an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Avi from justwritemusic.com, and don't forget to be awesome. Peace out.